when statins fails to control atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. I wanted to call it the the uh, the the lipidology end of lipidology. See, we had a patient one month back, twenty one year old male engineering student, very active. He came with severe substantial discomfort. Clinically, there was nothing special, even though history was so typical. An electrocardiogram in this 21-year-old boy showed an acute ST elevation, inferior volume infarction. All the results were normal. Look at the look at the uh, lipids, 158 cholesterol, triglyceride non HDL 41, LDL 105. So we he did not have any abnormal lipids. The, we had a full Discalaginosis workup and uh, and thrombocytes, thrombocytes and the in the hematology workup. What we found was he had an HSCRP of 63.2, but more important was the lipoprotein A, just 33.6. In our lab, anything more than 20 is abnormal. Anything, anything more than 20 is abnormal. He had a severe right coronary lesion. He had a right coronary angioplasty and is asymptomatic and active back at work now. He uses lipoprotein, the, yeah, the culprit is the question. When you look at the background of this, tennis legend, Arthur Ash, who had his first heart attack at 36. Remember, he was the first black to win the Wimbledon, was reported by high LPA. And same as Bob Harper, a celebrity fitness trainer, who nearly died of a massive heart attack at the age of 52. Sandra Tremelis, founder of the LPA Foundation, was diagnosed with a 95% blockage in one of her coronary arteries at the age of 39. And when you look at the, look at the, leading single gene risk factors of heart disease, you find that LPA is very important. Studies focusing on genetic variation and risk of diseases for the high LPA concentrations come from the highest risk of ASCVD that is independent of other causes of risk factors. Hypoprotein A, earlier called as LPA, is an LDL-like particle with a second protein called Apple lipoprotein A. That's the that's the coiled around it. The apple lipoprotein is coiled around it, and you can see it. People born with elevated LPA may have two to fourfold increased risk of heart attacks and other serious events compared to people with low LPA levels. Look at this. People with LPA levels, three to fourfold risk of MI, threefold risk of aortic stenosis. Five-fold risk of coronary artery stenosis, carotid stenosis, ischemic stroke, femoral artery stenosis, heart failure, cardiovascular mortality, all more than 1.5 times. Apple is an on, an on an equimolar basis. It's more atherogenic than LDL because it carries all the pro-atherogenic components of LDL as well as APOA that binds phosphocholine containing oxidation phospholipids. APOA enhances inflammation and it's a potential antifibrillatic effects because it inhibits plasminogen activation and fibrin degradation. LPA is a promising biomarker to help refine current strategies because it's estimated to be elevated in approximately 20% of the world population. I'd like to repeat that. It is estimated to be elevated in approximately 20% of the world population. So low density lipoprotein particle, then add a lipo, apple lipoprotein, which I showed you earlier. Cholesterol content in even very high levels of LPA are below traditional LDL cutoffs and likely to contribute less. On meta-analysis, LPA concentration more than 30, but in interheart studies, more than 50 was found to be significant. People have found LPA reduction by giving niacin, but AIM high and SPS to thrive results did not show any benefit. Of late, people find that antisense oligonucleotides do have benefit in LPA reduction. The PCSK9 inhibition 
is also reducing LPA by 27%. And that level of reduction of LPA is not enough. Same with Alurocumab. That, that, that reduction is not enough. You need a very potent LPA reduction by antisense oligonucleotide. Reduce the pro-inflammatory state of circulating monocytes here. So only such potent reduction of LPA alone can produce, reduce cardiovascular risk, not the modest reduction obtained by injections of PCSK9 inhibitors. Despite decades of research, the exact assembly, pathophysiology, and catabolism of LPA, the LPA little A remains enigmatic. We know our ignorance is the main thing. The antisense oligonucleotide is the antisense oligonucleotide. It's a DNA like strand that combines with the messenger RNA responsible for production of apolipoprotein A or ApoA. The complex ApoA and the ASO is subsequently degraded by RNAs. The absence of ApoA and the LPA particle cannot be assembled and circulating levels falls by about 80%. So antisense oligonucleotide is the only way by which it can come down. The Horizon trial is an outcome trial with primary measure to bring the first occurrence of composite endpoint or the all the risk factors. Outcomes will be available by 2024 only. Statins can increase LPA levels mildly, arguing against the increased LDL receptor mediated clearance of LPA. Increased LPA expression, apoya production, associated with statin use is likely to explain this outcome. On the other hand, drugs targeting PCSK9 or apobib, mipoparas, and we have discussed earlier, have been shown to reduce LPA plasma levels. 14% LPA reduction in a study of Evlokma. Those are very modest reductions of LPA. Because of the modest reduction, it may not affect arterial wall inflammation. Next, look, let us look at the triglyceride reduction. APOC3, APOC3 promotes hypertriglyceridemia by different mechanisms. It inhibits lipolysis by inhibiting leprotein lipase and hepatic lipase activities. It delays hepatic clearance of triglycerides and favors assembly or secretion of VLDL. We have to inhibit APO, APOC3. Depletion of APOC3 decreases plasma triglycerides. Le sorry. The, Depletion of APOC3 is a target treatment. Decrease of plasma triglyceride levels and protects from postprandial hypertriglyceridemia. How to, how to inhibit the APOC3 action? APOC3 interferes with binding of APOB, APOE containing lipoproteins. You find that expensive, despite expensive literature on APOC3, its exact role in lipometabolism remains to be fully elucidated. One drug, olanzorcin, an antisense oligonucleotide. The major strategy to reduce hepatic iso apoc 3 production is via ASO. And olanzorcin had many clinical trials, not at phase 3, phase 2. Phase 2 trials with weekly inhibitors injected the highest dose of olanzorcin, 300 milligram, as monotherapy, reduced apoc 3 by 80% and plasma triglyceride by 71%. These changes are accompanied by 46% increase in HDL cholesterol and 11% reduction in non HDL cholesterol. Unfortunately, Linus also increased 118% in LDL cholesterol. The lateral result is surprising. And phase three studies approach showed 84% reduction of APOC3 and more than 70% reduction of. Triglyceride levels after weekly administration of 300 milligram rhinosaurin. But remember, it increases LDL and may have a neutral effect. The re reduction of triglycerides is shown here. Familial, hy familial hyperbacronemia syndrome. Rhinosaurin decreases decreases the triglyceride when compared to placebo, and percentage of decrease of rhinosaurin when compared to placebo is shown here. Again, this is in millimoles, this is in milligrams of remarkable reduction of remarkable reduction of triglycerides by using plant source. 
the next generation we need an we need an antisense oligonucleotide which will not increase LDL. The next generation is 678354 without increasing LDL cholesterol. Phase two and first and two first and second trials of, of 30 milligram weekly administration resulted in 84% reduction of apoxy 3, 71% reduction of triglyceride, and 50% reduction of STL cholesterol. Sorry, one minute. Was an increase in HDL cholesterol and 70% decrease in LDL cholesterol. A phase two trial patients with uh, is being done. Angiopoidal like protein 3. This is the antibodies against angiopoidin 3, protein 3. Sorry. It's a humanized mouse model has been shown to reduce plasma particles by 8 plasma cholesterol by 50. 52% and atherosclerotic lesions have been reduced in size. Vasospa is a omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acid. On the short-term evaporate study evaluates Vasospa 80 mg saturated treated patients with elevated triglycerides and follows progression of low attenuation plaque volume. There are many trials going on, strength, prospective PA, OMEMI, using different omega-3 compositions and dosages targeting patients on statins with hypertriglyceridemia. This is one of the trials of Asospa, evaporate study. You find that every index which they looked at, the endpoints which they looked at, cardiovascular death, non-fatal MI, emergency revascularization, hospitalization for unstable angina, fatal or, fatal or non-fatal stroke, death from any cause, every one of the events have been reduced by using PASIPA in the evaporate study. More studies are required before uh, this could be, uh, we have a phase three style and could be introduced into clinical practice. So what we look for today beyond statins, beyond the conventional conventional lipids are reduction of LPA and reduction of aposy 3 angiopoidin angiopoidin like 3 omega-3 fatty acids, reduction of triglycerides. We are hoping to achieve some of this very successfully. Looking at the current scenario, where atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease continues to plague us in spite of statins, we have to look for other correctable factors. Diverotin A is an important factor, for which effective drugs are still being in the trial protocol. Antisense oligonucleotide is the answer. Triglyceride, especially with upper lipid A, is another risk factor who's controlled with the non-drugs is unsatisfactory. And we need drugs which will control both LPA and triglycerides together with the reduction of CV events. Well, I saw some IC67, E354, ASIPA are the answers that we have today. And many of these things are many, many theories behind these two things remain unanswered. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This is my talk is incomplete because our results are still incomplete. It requires a phase three study for marketing. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.